Hello everyone and welcome to chapter 5. This week we're going to be working on guided project 5-3. For this project you create an insurance renewal letter for Gretchen Suez at Central Sierra Insurance and merge the letter with recipient's information from an Excel file. This project's been modified for the use of SEMnet. A couple of quick housekeeping items. Um, go ahead and download your instructions like we always do. I usually take mine and throw it on the other side. I've got a dual monitor. Um, before you even download your start file, let's go ahead and click the resources once. Click to open the zip. And then I like to go ahead and, and right click and just copy the entire file. Now there are two resources in there. Um, I'm just going to right click and then copy and then I'm going into my actual folder that I have created uh, for chapter 5 and I'm not going to double click in there I am actually just going to paste in there and you can see that it's in there because now my folder has expanded and I'll just double check and so I've got everything in there and I'm just going to minimize that all right, and now we're going to start our file. And this video will be uh, somewhat lengthy. I'm going to go a little slow. Um, there are some tricky parts. Uh, maybe it's just me. Um, I don't do a lot of mail merge. Uh, I do, but I don't do a lot. And so I want to make sure that I go slow in this video. So just bear with me uh, on this video. So at this point, I'm just going to go ahead and do the fastest way to save is F12. And I know in my videos, I've been trying to tell you that uh, when you save or when you do anything, your move should be the fastest way to do it. And that might be instead of picking up your mouse to use your control keys. You've got 50 minutes on your final with 40 questions and you want to spend extra seconds on those harder questions than you would on something very easy like saving. So we're going to start at number three. We're going to start the mail merge and select the recipients. Click the mail merge start or start mail merge button. And that is in the mailings tab, just like you would think, okay, I've got mailing, mail merge. So you're going to the mail merge tab and we're going to start mail merge. And then we're going to select letters. And we know we're going to select letters because this is a letter that we're doing. Notice that any, nothing has really happened. So don't let that throw you. We've got a few more steps to make before um, everything starts to merge together. Click the Select Recipients button. And that is in the Start Mail Merge group here. And select Use an Existing List. And that's because we saved our resources and we downloaded those. The select resource or select data source dialog box opens. Let me just move that down so that we can take a look here. Select the Suez Renewals 05 Excel file. Now I'm not for sure where you saved yours, but I know exactly where I saved mine. And so we are going to go into that. and we want this one. Now notice that this is for Mac users and the reason why I have both is because I downloaded that entire zip file. In the select table dialog box select the renewal dollar sign table and mine's already defaulted. Verify that the first row of data contains headers box is checked and then click OK. Click the Edit Recipient List button located in the Start Merge group and to open the Mail Merge Recipients dialog box. So we want to edit our list. And we do have kind of an extensive list in here. There are several names, as you can see, um, and addresses. And I can use the scroll bar just so you can get a sense of what's in there. Address, name, um, the stock, Stockton Cabinets, uh, state, zip, name of their insurance, the policy number, manufacturing, and premiums. 
the rate and then the total. And let me go back over because we're going to be using the data source here. Click the last name column and then you are going to select sort ascending. We want it to be in alpha order. So the last names are now in alphabetical order. Deselect the checkbox on the last four recipients so they are not included in the merge. Click OK to close the Mail Merge Recipients dialog box. Next we're going to insert the address block and greeting line merge fields into the letter. Turn on the Show Hide tab and I'm I think I've said this before, I'm not a fan when this is turned on. It's, it's too busy. Um, I find it confusing. But remember it's SEMnet and it's asking us to do that, so we are going to do that. Uh, there's a couple of reasons why, and you'll, you'll see in just a second why they want us to turn that on. We are going to delete the uh, address placeholder text in the letter. However, do not delete the paragraph mark at the end of the line. And I'm actually just going to use my, my back key for that and not just um, take it and highlight it and then push delete. It's a little bit easier for me to do that. Next, we are going to click the address block button. That is located in the right and insert fields group. So we need to go back to mailings and here's your right and insert fields group and we have an address block here we are going to select Mr. Joshua Randall Jr. and let me use my scroll bar to show you there are a lot of examples to use this is how you want the names to appear um, this is an example that they've used for this person's name that's all that is here's your preview uh, window of how it will look and be careful the two above this, um, one says Josh, the other one says Josh in his middle initial. We don't want those, so just make sure that you're actually following the rules. Click through each of the four recipients in the preview area. So the first person, or actually this is the last person because it says number four, is Barry Munson. So we're going to use the uh, previous and just go back. And now you can see how they're all set up. Go ahead and click OK to close the insert address dialog box to insert the address block merge fill in the document. Delete the greeting placeholder text um, in the letter and again don't delete the paragraph mark at the end of the line and again I'm using my backspace. Click the greeting line button and again that is located in the right and insert fields group to open the insert greeting line dialog box. We are going to select dear and it says comma. Um, I want to pause just for a second. Normally for um, letters uh, this will be highlighted and so I want you to know that the proper way to do a letter is never a comma. So if you're using uh, mail merge for your boss, and as in our instructions, it does say to select the colon, go ahead and do that because that is the proper way to do that. We are going to change um, the formatting, and it's going to be Mr. and Mrs. Randall. Uh, apparently, our mail merge folks um, and our master list are all married and that is why we're selecting that and so again you're going to select dear Mr. and Mrs. Randall and then use the colon from the drop from the three drop down list in the greeting line format go ahead and click OK now we're going to insert another merge fields in the body and table of the document click the highlight merge fields button and that is in the right and inserts fields group and that is the highlight and merge fields and now you can see that our fields that we've just done are highlighted and we're gonna leave that on and you can tell that it's on it's grayed out okay now we're going to delete the policy number 
in placeholder text in the subject line. Don't delete the space before or after the placeholder text. Um, let me just get off of that just for a second. There's a dot here and there's a dot here. Those are actually spacings. So you're going to go right in front of the spacing and you're going to delete all the way to the next space dot. And now we're going to click the insert merge filled drop down arrow and select policy underscore number from the drop down list. And because we have the highlight merge fields still on, every time we change uh, one of these places to put our merged information in, they will now be highlighted. So verify there is one space before and after the policy number, um, and there is for me. Hopefully you did not delete those little dots. And now we're going to move to number six. This one's going to take me um, a little bit and it will you also, but let me read the instructions and show you the first couple. Continue inserting the merge fields in the document to replace the placeholder text using the information in the following table. Verify proper spacing and punctuation around merged fields. So when you look at A in the table on your instructions, and let me bring those up for you, we have here, so we're going to, our placeholder is company. They're telling you it's located in the first body paragraph and the merge field they want you to delete is company. Or the one that they want you to add is company. And you're just going to follow A through G. So when you get done, your paper should look like this. Um, and again, you're going to do it just like we did the other ones. Don't take out the spacings. We need the space. So let's get started. The first one is company. So I'm just going to delete that. And then we are going to go up to insert merge field. And of course, you're going to want company. Next, you're going to look for insurance company and we're going in front of the comma and insert merge field will be insurance underscore company policy description um, this is set in a table and that's what these little marks mean so uh, be careful of that and you can tell that it's a table we've got the uh, selection handle box here so these are like tabs within the table so just be careful not to delete those you need those so I'm deleting policy description and we are going to insert merge field and policy underscore description premium basis and you can tell that this one is right justified. That looked like it was just centered. And we want premium bases. And the next one is rate per 1000. And the last two, we're almost there. Total premium. And now you're going to go down to the last sentence. And there is a period there, so be careful not to take him. And we want first underscore name. So we have several uh, merges that we're going to be uh, doing. Go ahead and, and take a look at all those that are highlighted and make sure that you haven't taken any of the uh, extra spacing that you left the commas in wherever we had a comma or a period. Now we're going to preview and check for errors in the merge. Click the preview results button that is located in the review results group and so preview results to display the recipient information in the merged fields. So we have, and it's turned on, and we're going to turn that off in just a second, but here's the first guy, Lamar Gordon. 
and so we have his policy number and you remember when I showed you the information on the merged um, dialog box and I scrolled over so this is all the information that's plugged in here this is very handy to use if you have multiple letters and you're working for a large company and you're sending out multiple letters to multiple clients um, so probably the longest part of this isn't actually doing the letter it's actually creating your mail merge um, uh, box with all of your your dat your database with all of your people that would be the longest part of creating a mail merge okay click the next record or previous record button to preview all four that's just these little um, blue arrows up here and if you hover it says next record so we're just going to go through you remember we took the last uh, three or four people off of that dialog box in that database and so now we just have four people in there and I'm going to go back to number one now click the preview results button to turn it off and to display the merge fields in the document uh, your instructions say important be sure to turn the previews results off before the next step Click the Highlight Merge Fields button to turn off this feature. And so this is the Highlights Merged field. We are done with that, so we're going to turn that off. Click the Check for Errors button. And that is located in the Preview Results group. The Checking and Reporting Errors dialog box will open. And we have three radio buttons with three uh, error reports to choose from. Your instruction says to click the simulate the merge. So what it's going to do is it's going to actually merge everything and then report any er er errors in this document. And go ahead and click OK. A dialog box opens confirming that there are no errors, which is a good thing. If there are errors, the errors are reported in a different document. If you are that person that did get errors and hopefully you didn't, um, something has happened and you'll probably need to um, start over. We're only at number seven, so hopefully it won't take you too long. Uh, my guess is, is if you're watching the video, you probably don't have any errors. Go ahead and click OK and close up that dialog box. It says to save and close the document. So we are going to save and then I'm going to close the document. Important, your final project should be one page and display the merged fields. If you do not turn off the preview mode and step 8C, your file will not grade properly. Check your work carefully and refer to figure 5-96 for the completed solution for the image. Upload and save your file, your saved file. So we're going to go back into SEMnet and we're going to upload. And this is the renewal letter. So if you've got any questions, um, please use the Ask Dr. Barnes a, a question tab. And let's just see uh, other housekeeping items. You do have, um, I got 100, you do have two uh, independents this week. So make sure that you complete both of those, your chapter reading, and follow out the week with the chapter quiz. Good luck, everyone.